guys welcome back to the channel today's video is something a little bit different it's all about trying to save van life or is it too late yeah uh, basically we had a lot of questions recently about the uh, what do we think about the situation what's happened in portugal where they've had an entire country ban on wild camping now it may not be a new law from what we understand it's it's a law that's been around for a while but now they are really enforcing it yeah and i think there's big fines being mm. issued for anyone camping outside of designated areas or campsites you're new around here we've been living and traveling in our van for the last four years around europe and before that uh, we we're over in Australia and New Zealand for, for two years and the whole time, pretty much, we've been wild camping. Um, yeah, it's all wild camping, finding our own spots in beautiful areas, parked up in nature and that's just how we like to do it. We're also kind of quite budget, so obviously staying at paid campsites is not really an option for us when we're travelling for um, months and months or the whole year on end. Yeah, generally we're just out on our own wherever possible in the sticks and now this new law is threatening that about this obviously we are absolutely gutted uh, to hear about this we were in portugal last year for a few months and um, as always we were wild camping the whole time in fact last year we were in portugal for several months at the beginning of the year and yeah. at the end end of the year because we couldn't go very far because of pandemic so we went to portugal but now on the on the algarve like the popular region of portugal you know one of the most touristy regions in the south and on the west coast there was kind of a law in the national park you weren't allowed to wild camp there originally but the rest of the country have been free mm. to do it now that's all changed like we said wild camping is no more in portugal and what we're worried about now is this is going to be a knock-on effect and already uh, in um, the province of valencia in spain which is sort of halfway up the east coast just below barcelona it seems like that autonomous community has started enforcing it as well. So is this going to continue? Is it going to happen in the whole of Spain? Is wild camping done? We've had the pandemic and now the vandemic is in full swing kind of thing. It's getting more and more popular to travel in vans and you know. And, and I think people feel like it's a, it's a safer way to now, travel yeah. with the current situation, isn't it? Because hotels are sort of closed or they're not as safe as being in your own self-contained van. Mm. So it's getting more and more popular. I mean, just a couple of days ago in our very small village. There's a few spots around the village where you can park up and we've seen a couple of vans, but the other day we saw like five, six motorhomes. Six vans in one little car park. <laughs> in our tiny village, we were like, oh my gosh, this is more vans than we've ever seen here. We feel there's a, a number of different reasons why they're enforcing this no sleeping in your vehicle. Complaints from people that live in the areas where they are getting overrun by vans, not just overrun by vans, but people messing up, people leaving litter, people going to toilets and not burying it tissues everywhere it's definitely not all vanners that leave that kind of mess mm. for sure like it's um some locals picnickers day trippers that kind of thing too we're not we're not pointing any fingers and you know we're, we're not the vanners aren't going to blame the people in motorhomes and the motorhomes aren't going to blame you know vice versa yeah. we we can't blame other people we've all just got to do our little bit to try and turn things around to turn things to around to try yeah. and give van lifers um a good reputation mm instead of the bad reputation that we currently have. So one thing we can all do is, now you've heard it all before, but actually put it into practice and leave a place where you stay in a better condition than you found it. Do you know what this is? It's a very handy <laughs> must have, absolute must have in the van to try and help save van life. And actually I get so much pleasure in using one of these. <laughs> that, that sounds, sounds a weird. bit <laughs> <laughs> don't i love no, no i'm serious it makes you feel so good to make an area completely litter free don't be doing this see that don't be doing it i never used to have one and then i used to just use a disposable glove and it's nowhere near as no. much fun yeah. big bits little bits ah. Quick, smooth. Look how done. quick, look at that. Look at that action. Look at this. Go, 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 go. Really, go. really quick here. So you can get everything. Wow, look, go, 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 go. Quick, this one. 
five, four, oh, oh, oh. five, four, oh, no. three, oh, not under two, pressure. one. Oh, under pressure. You put a timer on it and she fails. Oh, it is. Oh, 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 she's struggling. She's struggling with this one. Oh, and it gets it. High five. You know, you can get one of these for five euros or five pounds and it's going to just be brilliant for the van. Just get a couple, get a couple. If you and your partner are traveling, then have a little game so you can pick up the most bits Pizza. of litter. Yeah, and then pile it all up. <laughs> How long did that take? Like, not even a minute just to do that whole area. It's, honestly, it's, it's, it's make quite it feel tricky good. picking up big bottles, isn't it? Liter yeah. bo bottles of spirits are a challenge with these sticks, <laughs> but give it a go. Yeah. Um, we will pop a link in the description of where you can find one of these um, too. So, yes, it's the new must have to save van life. You know, if all of us do this and the locals and people see van life as doing this on a regular basis, straight away that's going to help. Yeah, and then if other people who do drop litter come to a place and there's no litter around, they'll be less, less inclined likely, to, to less drop it. Less likely to drop it in the first place. If some place. people see litter, they'll be like, oh, it doesn't matter, people drop it here, so it just gets worse and worse. And if we, some of us or all of us, make the effort and pick it up, then it's just going to make it yeah. a lot better. Yeah. We've seen in Portugal, like the numbers of vans that have been going there have increased and increased. And it, it's okay if you go to a car park and there's just a few vans or a few motomes, we'll all call them vans, but you know a few's okay but once it starts getting overrun and the locals go there and they can't park up to go down the beach yeah you get and if they feel like the outsider because they go down and there's you know vans parked all along the the beach front and everyone's sat outside with their tables and chairs and washing on the line kind of thing you can see how then, that would upset mm. a local who lives in that area would be kind of like well hold on a second this is my local beach and i can't even find a car park okay guys now before you leave a nasty little comment saying we should be supporting the local campsites and they'll go under we don't agree with this at all we go past we obviously drive past a lot of campsites to see a lot of vans and motorhomes and obviously tents and everything else and caravans using campsites not everyone wants to go into the wild and you know you, no. you want to meet people maybe and you want to some some have swimming pools and restaurants and yeah. all that sort of thing so yeah I I think if wild camping does get banned in places like Spain like it has done in Portugal I think it is going to be struggling because where would you go because a lot of campsites are going to be mm. completely f com they will definitely be full all the full, full yeah so where do you go then what do you do just drive around all night so obviously if we're going to go to the toilet in nature you need to be out in nature where there's no one and then you dig a hole and you bury absolutely everything but the situation we've seen in Portugal and other places is it's literally just there on show tissues everywhere and it's absolutely disgusting how anyone could ever do that is absolutely beyond me it's just it's just, it's shocking, just isn't gross it? it really is and we see a lot of it in all countries all over the place actually mm. don't you you go for a walk and you just see it there so that gives you know gives us people us travelers a really bad name and yeah yeah so yeah, bury everything. Yeah, and bury. also, I mean, there's some people who will say, well, I've got a toilet in my van, I do, and, and I'm to that. And, and I know most of us do, most of us mm. are responsible campers, but not all of us. We have seen on many occasions, chemical toilet just out behind a bush or not buried. That's maybe even worse in a way because yeah. you've got all of the chemicals there. So another thing we think is if you go somewhere to wild camp and there's already more than a couple of vans there, maybe- Two's company, three's, three's a, a crowd. crowd. Maybe just go and find another spot. I think the problem is when you've got a um, motorhome or van bumper to bumper all along a, a beachfront car park like mm. we mentioned before that's the problem everyone wants to you know travel around the coast everyone wants to see view watch the sunset or sunrise over the sea but but if everyone does it it's just going to ruin it for for all of us yeah. really because yeah as we said before no local wants to go there and not be able to park up themselves and see van after van after van and on the coastline when you've got some nice houses along the along the coast looking out to see nice view and then you get lots of vans and they have got the house there you know so we should respect that it's all about respecting the locals isn't it and yeah and respecting, respecting the, the environment country. that's 
that's that's exactly what it is so we are travelers we have the van um, at home on wheels so we can move around so we feel like it's a good idea to do that obviously there is places that you can stay for longer sort of more designated areas um, where there's quite a big community of people mm. that's fine but places like I don't know beachfront car parks public sort of areas I think it's a good idea to limit to a couple of days yeah don't definitely you? now we know that some people aren't you know just up for just traveling and seeing as much as they as they can and they want kind of thing some yeah. people just escaping the the cold winters and they're coming down to warmer climates and just want to relax and if you do happen to stay somewhere a little bit longer when other people come to that area remember that you don't own that little park up <laughs> so don't stand there with your arms folded giving the people evils that drive past thinking <laughs> we have that what, are you, what are you doing coming We're to my like, park why do they all look so like angry at us for just pulling in we're so talking funny. about ever travelers they're not local plates either they're foreign plates and they're parked up because they've been there a little while and they they probably, you know, they know everyone. I don't think you get that everywhere. No, not but you everywhere. you do not definitely get that sometimes, don't you? But if you do, it don't. <laughs> At least unfold your arms. If you do own a larger vehicle, now it is a little bit trickier. We understand that. That's why we've got Vinny, because it's easy. Um, but if you do have a larger vehicle, try not to park over like parking spots, especially if there's limited space. Like um, parking bays. Yeah. Quite often you see people park across and then they're taking up like four bays yes. and then again the locals or whoever will come down to get a spot and they can't i mean that's quite bad isn't it dizzy mm. dizzy come here come here um another thing would be to don't get too much stuff out or actually you're not really supposed to get any stuff out are mm. you unless you're in a, in a campsite oh. type thing or if you're in the middle of nowhere in the wilds and there's no one around that's you know it's totally fine then but if there's people around and again it's, a again, it's, it's kind of all all about like beach car parks isn't mm. it places where lots of people use lots of people go um that's more of what all of this is about and to summarize it i think we just all need to do our bit you know let's do our bit and try and change it around yeah try and give it. the van life as a good name instead of a bad reputation we can do that, can't we? Let's do it. Get yourself a litter Let's all stick, work together. Pick up the litter and just make van life great again. Pick up the litter, don't be a shitter. <laughs> <laughs> and we just hope that, because what's happening now, all the vans that can't park in Portugal anymore are coming into Spain. So don't come here. <laughs> just drive past Andalusia. So guys, let us know in the comments what you think about the whole vandemic. Uh, how do you see things going? Is it too late? Are we going to get banned from everywhere while camping? And then what are we going to do if we do? Get yourself a plan B. If you've got one, let us know in the comments so we can take it. guys welcome back to the channel now today's video is something a little bit different something that's very close to our hearts and probably all of our hearts this is a video about trying to save what we love doing most eating <laughs> <laughs> then campsites will go under dizzy agrees <laughs> <laughs> no um we've come here and um, it's basically about wild camping and where is the future of wild camping heading? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Okay.